Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning. We appreciate everybody being here and watching the live stream also. Let's all stand together and we'll sing Never Alone. Page 132 if you want to use your hymnal. Never Alone. Sing what a promise, amen. 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 Brother Danny, lead us in a word of prayer, please. Let's pray. Father, we just want to tell you we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for knowing that promise, Lord. You never leave us alone. Yeah. We're so thankful, Lord, to have a living Savior. Amen. Lord, that never leaves us, never forsakes us, Lord, always loves us. And we just want to tell you this morning, we're very grateful, thankful for that, thankful for our church, thankful, Lord, for just all you do for us, Lord. And we'd just like to pray for our service today, that you bless the singing, bless the preaching. If there be one here today that don't know Jesus as their personal Savior, today would be the day of salvation, Lord. 
And we just pray that you continue to bless our church and thank you for our church and thank you for all you do. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Good Sunday morning. Good to see you this morning. And um, I know that that song, I hope it rings true to you, uh, that you know Jesus. He's your Savior. And uh, because he is, he will never leave you alone. Um, he's always there for you, whatever you face, whenever you face it, and all that you need. I, I can tell you this, uh, coming back from camp yesterday, I'm glad we weren't alone. Because uh, uh, what normally is about an eight- or nine-hour trip turned into be a 12-hour trip. And um, the, uh, uh, me and Brother Don were talking earlier, I know there's a gas crunch, but they're not out there. Because um, everybody and their brother is traveling and um, I think there was a wreck on 26, one on 95 in Georgia, one on 95 in Florida. And so um, a lot of little slowdowns here and there. But uh, we were talking with one of our campers, didn't make it down to the van in time. We were supposed to leave at 6 o'clock yesterday morning. We didn't end up leaving until 645. And we may have been in one of those wrecks. We hadn't left a little later. So Amen. God's got a reason for everything. We just trust him. And like I said, he never leaves us alone. And if we believe that, he's going to take care of us, even if we're taking a 12-hour trip that's supposed to be a whole lot shorter. But that, that's, that's up to him. If you're visiting with us here at Mill Creek Baptist Church, first time in our morning service, if you would raise your hand, the ushers have a visitor's card they'd like to give you. If you would, when you receive that, if you'd fill out the visitor's card and then drop it in the offering plate. Uh, when it comes by, if you don't have it finished by then, just hand it to one of us in the vestibule when you uh, leave this morning. Brother Leonard, you get right there, Brother Leonard, right? Wave at him. Throw something at him. Do something. He'll, he'll get it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Again, if you'd fill that card out so we can have a record of your visit, we appreciate y'all being with us today. And, uh, again, just pray that the service... Is a blessing to you. Mentioned about camp again tonight. We'll have our our sort of our camp report testimony night, and I'll show you some videos, pictures, and some of the campers and give their uh, give their testimony. God was real good to us uh, this week at camp. Uh, I think I told you before we left there between the the teenagers um, and the uh, the sponsors, they call it the sponsors or the, the adults, whether it's a pastor, youth pastor, just a, a youth worker that bring the kids there. And then the counselors, uh, there were 1,100 there this week. And then that's not count, counting the staff that runs everything there. But uh, God really blessed, and um, we had a great week at camp. So looking forward to sharing that, that with you uh, tonight. Uh, this week is uh, volleyball it's tomorrow night. Volleyball, volleyball tomorrow night, 6:30 to 8:30 in the gym. That fellowship. Don't forget about that. And then Tuesday, our visitation, shut-in visitation at 10 o'clock, and our regular visitation at 6:30 um, this coming Tuesday. Also, the teenagers are going bowling Thursday night. Um, if you would like to join us, you're you're welcome to. We'll leave here at six. Return time is to be determined. We don't know exactly what that's going to be. We usually just text the parents and give them a, a rough idea. Along with it is a stop at Chick-fil-A. That seems to be the, the best place that we like to, the teenagers like, and we go, I'm all for Chick-fil-A. And uh, so if you uh, need more information, you can see me, Chance, or Allie, and uh, we'll get you the information on that, but uh, that's this Thursday, and if any of you adults want to go bowling with us, you can go bowling with us, and uh, we'd be glad to have you. All right, Second Timothy chapter 3 is where Pastor Ramsey's going this morning. If you want to go ahead, turn your Bibles there, and we don't have one up here, but the devotionals are finally here, and they're out in the vestibule. If you uh, haven't got one yet, we're sorry that they're late. We're going to try to figure out uh, how to fix that in the future. We had a problem between Postal Service, UPS, whoever, and get that straightened out and um, get them here on time for the next quarter. But they're there um, if you would like one. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you again for letting us be in your house. God, we do thank you that you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. 
And uh, that we will never be alone. We thank you for loving us. We pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you, haven't received you as their Savior, that, Father, truly they are alone. Uh, they may not even know it, but, Father, what they can have with you is, is a, a wonderful relationship where you'll always walk with them and talk with them and be there with them if they just will accept you as their Savior. So we lift them up to you this morning. That you speak to their hearts especially. Bless and speak to your people. Bless Brother Don as he brings this word. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand once more together. Page 137, in times like these.
times like these I have a Savior in times like these I have an anchor I'm very sure I'm very sure my anchor holds and grips the This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the Appreciate everyone singing. Shake hands with your neighbor. This choir comes down. Play that again, Brandon. Last night I dreamed an angel came. He took my hand, he called my name. He bid me look the other way. I saw a man and I heard him say, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men to me. He turned, and then I saw the nail-scarred hands that bled for me. I touched the hem of his garment that fell round him there. My life, my heart I gave, my soul was in his care. When I awoke, my heart beat so, and in the dark, I saw a glow. This was no dream, he turned my way. Again I heard my Savior say, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw men to me. He turned, and then I saw the nail-scarred hands that bled for me. And I touched the hem of his garment that fell round him there. My life, my heart I gave, my soul was in his care. My life, my heart I gave, my soul was in his care. Amen. Amen.
Appreciate that, Brother Judd. Okay, it says, stand up and walk to pulpit. <laughs> I don't know what y'all laughing at. I embarrass my wife when I do things like that. <laughs> and she'll let me know about it later on. But anyway, don't forget those devotionals out there in the pulp in the uh, vestibule. Now we had a hard time getting those things this time, and uh, we get them from Landmark Baptist College in Haines City, and uh, th they put them in the mail uh, on the third uh, of July. And after we didn't get them for about 10 days, we called, and they don't know what happened to them. So they UPSed them to us, and so maybe we'll uh, start getting them on time now. I don't know, but they're out there in the vestibule, and please get them and use them now because I, I don't want to uh, uh, order those things in and then have to throw half of them away. That's a waste of money and waste of the Lord's money, and we don't want to do it. Of course, they don't cost us anything. They furnish them to us, but they do cost them, and so we don't want to waste that. So you just make sure you get them and use them. And uh, they are good. They're good devotional. They really are. They're very, very useful, and that will help you with your daily devotions. I know everybody here today does those, so uh, you that will help you with it. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 3. First number one, title of the message this morning is In Times Like These. In Times Like These. Verse number one, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now I'm, my prayer as I was preparing this message is that this message would bring comfort and peace to our hearts during times like these, you see. Because we indeed today are living in perilous times. Much like Paul describes in the rest of these verses in this particular chapter. Perilous means dangerous times. Perilous means hazardous times. Never in my lifetime have we faced anything like what we're facing today. Many people live in fear of what's going to happen next. And I think we can all agree to the fact that we are living in perilous times. Think about some of the things that are happening. Think about financially. Never in history has any country, not to mention countries around the world, willingly and totally shut down all of their economies and brought them all to a grinding halt. The world just more or less shut down. All businesses and places and everything just shut down. Politically, we're worried about, people are worried sick about the upcoming election. Somebody told me the other day, Pastor, I'm, I'm scared if so-and-so doesn't get elected, I'm worried that America as we know it will cease to be. We need to pray. We need to pray for our country because of the times we live in. We look around and we see Senseless shootings that make no sense whatsoever. We see the continuous lawlessness, the mayhem from those that go beyond peaceful protesting and wreak havoc and mayhem in our cities and on our streets. Now, I won't discuss, I won't take time this morning to discuss the social moral standards that have fallen by the wayside today. We 
vir virtually have no moral standards anymore. Today is anything goes, no matter what it is. Pornography is the single largest and most profitable sector on the Internet. And we're being daily assaulted with pressure to give in to the agenda of the perverts. Not to mention gangs that roam our streets to where you're not safe to walk out in your garden or in your garage or in your yard. The scourge of drugs that we find all over the land and many, many more discouraging and worrisome developments in our society. Without a question, folks, this morning, these are perilous times. It was times like these, though, that a precious song was written many years ago. It was written by a woman by the name of Ruth K. Jones. And the title of the song is the song we just sang, In Times Like These. That song was the mainstay of the church for the second part of the 20th century. She wrote that song at the low point of World War II when it seemed like that the Allies were bogged down in Italy and other countries and the war was seen to be going nowhere. The world's economies were at a breaking point and there were rations everywhere. I can remember those rations very vividly. Probably the most... To me, the most terrible time of the rations was having to use saccharin instead of sugar. <laughs> Saccharin's not for human consumption. <laughs> but think about that song that we say, in times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be sure, be very sure this morning. Don't leave any doubt that your anchor holds. And what is that anchor? Jesus. Jesus. He's the one. He's the only one. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips that solid rock. This morning, I want to take the words of that precious song and use them as a springboard for our message. The first thing I want to think about, the song begins, in times like these, you need a Savior. Now why? Why do you need a Savior this morning? Well, you need a Savior, number one, because without a Savior, you are nothing but a lost sinner. And you're guilty before a righteous God. The Bible says thus in Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You fall short of God's standard for holiness. You don't match up to God's standards. You are a lost sinner and God cannot allow sin in his presence. So you need a Savior. Secondly, you need a Savior because of God's judgment, my friend. God told a, a religious man named Nicodemus in John 3.36, he told him, he says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth upon him. My friend, listen, when you read that 36th verse of that third chapter of John, you don't have to run and get a commentary to understand what it's saying, my friend. It's pretty black and white right there. Either you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and have everlasting life, or you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God's wrath is laid up in store for you. There is no in-between. There is no debating that. 
Thirdly, you need a Savior because the final destination for those that are lost in their sin is hell. In his vision of the judgment for all those who have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, John the Revelator says in John chapter, in Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me ask you a question this morning. In times like these, you need a Savior. My friend, do you have a Savior this morning? See? If you died tonight, my friend, God forbid that you should come down with some dread disease. And pass off into eternity tonight. Where would your soul go? My friend, there's only two possibilities. Only two possibilities. Either heaven or hell. I want to tell you this morning, thank God Almighty, a Savior has been provided for you and for me and his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ that came to this earth and lived a perfectly sinless life and died on the cross to pay for your sins and my sins so that we could have a Savior today. The Bible says over and over again that if you will turn from your sin and believe on him as your Savior, that God would forgive your sin, save your soul, and become your Savior. If you've never done that, my friend, if you've never done that, if there has not been a time in your life when you humbled yourself before Almighty God and confessed to Him that you needed a Savior and you opened the door of your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and invited Him into your heart to take control of your life, my friend, I encourage you, don't leave this building this morning without that. Because in times... Like these, you need a Savior. Amen. Secondly, in times like these, you need security. The next phrase in that song says, in times like these, you need an anchor. You need an anchor. A ship's anchor, you know what it does? A ship's anchor makes that ship sturdy and secure. Even when the winds are blowing and howling and when the waves are high and the seas are rough in troubled times, my friend, it can be your Savior. And in these perilous times today, my friend, where else are you going to find an anchor? Where else are you going to find security other than in the Lord Jesus Christ? If you think about it, Everything in this world is insecure. Everything this world holds is insecure. You may say, well, preacher, I've got social security. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put all of my eggs in that basket. I'll tell you that right now. I wouldn't do that because it's not very secure. You may think you have a job security. But I listen, one accident, and you can wake up jobless. You may think that your health is secure, but tomorrow you could come down with COVID, and you could be one of the unfortunate ones that come down with the long-term effects of that. My friend, that what I'm trying to say to you that the truth of the matter is, indeed, in this present world, it has nothing that is secure. Nothing, but in Jesus, you have security because he's your anchor. If the Lord Jesus Christ is your savior this morning, you have the security of his promise of secure, being secure. 
He said in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. If Jesus is your anchor this morning, if Jesus is your Savior, you have the security this morning of knowing that he's with you to help you and to guide you no matter where you go or what trials confront you. You have also have the security that you'll never have to fear the judgment of Almighty God. Listen to his promise that Jesus gave in John chapter 10, verse 28. He says, I give unto them eternal life. How long is eternal life? It's forever. It's forever. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If Jesus is your anchor, my friend, you are secure in him. You're secure in him. You need never fear hell because he promises you that you'll never perish. See, no one in this universe, nothing in this universe can pluck you out of his hand. You also have the security of God's eternal love. In the book of Romans chapter 8, Verses 38 and 39 to me are, are two of the most precious verses in the Bible. They sum it all up, my friend. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 and 39, he says this, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But if that is not security, then I don't know what is. My friend, the, great, the, the greatest security that you can have in this present world, my friend, is that to know that no matter what goes on in this world, you're secure. No matter who, my friend, is in charge, you're still secure. No matter if the economy sinks or even if there's a recovery and even if the socialists take over, no one or no thing can ever separate you from the love of Almighty God. But you know what? Our joy and our peace, my friend, should not depend on who's in charge, who sits in the Oval Office. Whether the stock market goes up or down or what's going on in the news, my friend, listen, it is a settled fact that Christians down through the ages have thrived in good times and bad times. Many have found hope and many have found peace even under repressive Muslim regimes and even in, under communist dictators. Some of the greatest Christian movements grew out of the midst of wars and plagues and famine. My friend, the New Testament church grew out of a time of terrible peril. The promises of God are just as valid in bad times as they are in good times. In times like these, Jesus offers security for our hearts where we can find comfort and joy and peace and lay down at night and put your head on your pillow and go into sleep knowing that you're attached to the solid rock. To the anchor of God, his only begotten son. Number three, in times like these, you need the scriptures. The second verse of that song says, in times like these, you need the Bible. Brother, I tell you, there's never been a time, a greater time when we needed to get back to the old book. 
Get rid of all these modern books and get back to the old book. Get back, my friend, to the old songs and the old way of preaching God's word and the old way of presenting the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, we need to understand the Bible in the times that we live in order to have that kind of peace that God wants us to have that passes all understanding. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. My friend, if you get in the Bible, you'll find out what to do in times like this. I, I, listen, I am very dogmatic about this fact, my friend, that we are living in the last days. I don't think anybody can confuse. Can confuse I don't believe anybody can deny that. I, I don't know exactly how close we are. I don't know anybody that knows exactly how close we are. But I know that this, my friend, listen, the Bible tells me right here in this first verse of this third chapter that in the last days perilous times will come. If we're not living in perilous times, then I would hate to see how it was in Noah's day, wouldn't you? And, and listen, to, listen to his description in verses 2 through 7 of that chapter. He says, we're living in perilous time, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. My friend, we need the scriptures to understand what's going on in our world and what we should do about it. My friend, listen, we need to get back to the scriptures to learn how to rear our children in these and perilous days. My friend, almost every phase of our society today is anti-God. Almost every phase. I have never in my lifetime seen it when all of our government from the top to the bottom is anti-God. Everywhere you look all the time, my friend, everything, every bill they want to pass today is anti-God. They're not worried about uh, the fact that gas is the price that it is. They're not worried about the fact that a loaf of bread I used to pay a uh, dollar and a half for now is three dollars. They're not worried about the price you have to pay at the prescriptions at your drugstore anymore. You know the only thing they're worried about is how in the world can we kill some more babies? How can we do that? How can, what laws can we pass where we can kill some more babies? I've never seen a time in my lifetime when our government hated babies so bad. Amen. I never have. I don't know how you feel about it. Don't particularly care. But those are murderers. Amen. It's murderers, my friend. And God is not going to bless murdering children. Entertainment is anti-God. You can't find any decent entertainment anymore. It's all laced with uh, profanity and vulgarity and everything else that go. You have to sit through anything that you want to try to watch. You have to sit through uh, some half-naked person making a fool out of themselves. And all of this entertainment to make today is me. It doesn't entertain me. It makes me sick at my stomach. Amen. It makes me want to regurgitate. See, 
They all conspire to undermine your parental authority as parents, my friend, which is going to destroy our society. But that, listen, it should not surprise us. It should not. If, if, if you have an understanding of the scriptures as you should have, you ought to understand, my friend, it should not surprise us. Jesus told us in John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am the. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. My friend, listen. Abundant life is in Jesus Christ. It's not in a godless government. Satan wants to steal your kids and destroy them so that he can destroy the home. And my friend, they're making every effort they can today to destroy our home. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. My friend, listen, Jesus is the embodiment of truth in living form. The scriptures is the, uh, the Bible is the truth in written form. My friend, if we don't get back in this, you know, I took, I told you before, but I, I, I'll never forget back when I was a kid in school and my teacher had one of these laying on her desk right up at the front of the class. And she read out of it every morning. Read out of it every morning. You know, a teacher would go to jail today if they did something like that. They, they, they lock them up quicker than they would lock up a murderer. See? Listen, in times like these as never before, we've got to get back to the old book. We've got to start teaching it, rearing our children under the teachings of the Word of God. We've got to start conforming our lives, my friend, according to the teachings of the Word of God. God gives us His standard clear in the Word of God, my friend, and we have to come back to that if we ever hope to survive. <coughs> Lastly, in times like these, you need to be serving. You need to be serving. The second line of that second verse says, in times like these, Oh, be not idle. Oh, be not idle. Listen, when there's trouble and when there's peril in the world, that's the time as never before when God's people should be out in the vineyard. God's people, my friend, are, should be doing everything they can to reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to, get, my friend, we've got to start once again getting back to telling people who we are, that we're Christians and we're not ashamed of it. We were at a restaurant the other night, and every, every once in a while I see this, and, and I, I usually will say something to the people because it's such an encouragement to me, but there was a couple about our age that was sitting a couple tables over. While they came in, I saw them when they came in and sat down at the table, and uh, they, the waitress come and they ordered their drink, their tea. And so whenever she brought the tea back to the table, they were standing, the, the husband and the wife were, were sitting there with their heads bowed asking the blessing on the, on the meal that they were about to partake of. And, and the waitress stood there with her hands like that while they prayed. That, you know what, that, I believe that had a little bit of effect on that waitress. She had the respect that these were Christian people thanking God for the blessings of food. You know, but I, I, I want to tell you, I'm a people watcher. I'm a people watcher. I watch people whenever they come in and sit down. Very seldom anymore do you ever see anybody bow their head and ask a blessing on their food. Very seldom. Very, usually when they come in and sit down, what they do, mama and daddy and four kids take out their cell phones. Right? If they had a dog, I guess he'd have a cell phone. I guess he'd have a cell phone. But they all take out, and they're not fellowshipping, they're not talking, they're not having any family time. They're all sitting in there. Mm. 
My friend, listen. It, it's time that we, my friend, begin to stand up and let people know who we are. See, we need to invite people to get to our church and to get out of the sound of the gospel where they can come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. John F. Uh, Wolverd said, Now is the time for Christians to face the task of evangelism, prayer, devotion, and service. All of these are pressed upon us so urgently by our present world condition. God help us in these perilous times my friend, not to give up, not to become discouraged, not to go about with gloom and doom on our faces, not to live fearful lives, not to be apathetic. But each passing day, my friend, brings us opportunities that we can stand up for Jesus, that we can say a word for him, that people can see us pray in public and then know that we're a child of God. Each passing day provides us greater and greater opportunity for service. It also brings us one day closer to the coming of our Lord. He says, in times like these, be not idle. We need to be about the Father's business. We need to put aside our weights and our sins and get serious about serving God. Because the times that we live in are times of great peril and it requires our best effort. Because times like these calls for each one of us, my friend, to stand up and be counted. You know, I watch these people that are running for office and the people that are working with them trying to help get their candidates elected. And that's what's going to happen now. For the next several weeks, these people, their goal is to reach as many people as possible to tell them about their candidate and about the policy that their candidate proposes and what their candidate can do for them. And these people, I want to tell you, their heart's in it. They work day and they work night. They work tirelessly, my friend, giving their all. They do that because they've got a cause. You see, they believe that what they're doing is important. They believe that they're doing serious business that has to be done. Well, listen, my friend, God help us to be di just as diligent about serving God and giving our all for him. Because if you believe in our cause, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the answer to man's problem, my friend, if you believe working for the kingdom of God is important, my friend, listen, we need to get busy and not be idle about what we're doing. We live in perilous times, friend, and in times like these, you need a Savior. I don't know whether you've met the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way or not, but I want to tell you the way the invitation is open that you might come to know him this morning. In times like these, you need security, security that only he can give you. He be, he'll be your anchor, my friend, where you won't be blown about with every wind of doctrine that comes down the path. We've got to get back to the scriptures. Get back to the scriptures. Listen. Listen to this. I found this poem uh, in a magazine a couple of weeks ago. It says, though the cover is worn and the pages are torn, and though places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is the book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. When I prayerfully look in the precious old book, as my eyes scan the pages, I see many tokens of love from the Father above who is nearest and dearest to me. This old book is my guide. Tis a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my way. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it today. My friend, in these times as never before, we need to get into God's word. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some time in study, my friend. 
we got to get back to the old way. These times, my friend, have really done a number on people. I, I, they've led to unprecedented times of loneliness. People today, there's so many people out there today that are lonely. You know, I heard on the news just this past week that every 11 minutes, every 11 minutes, somebody commits suicide. Every 11 minutes. That, you know what? That means while we're here this morning, for this hour, five to six people are going to commit suicide. Because they're depressed, because they're lonely, because they're suffering. My friend, we have opportunity. We have open doors set before us this morning like they never have been before to try to preach, reach a suffering world, a lonely world, a depressed world. What an opportunity to be a blessing to those that need a Savior. What an opportunity that we have today. God help us to, to step up in our calling and serve God and others as we should. In times like these, my friend, we need God and what he has to offer more than any other time in our history. Do you know him this morning? Do you know him personally? In pardon and forgiveness of your sin. Do you know him? If you know him this morning, is he your guide? Are you a surrender? Have you surrendered yourself to his direction in your life, my friend, this morning? He wants to use you. He wants to use you as an instrument to serve him today. And my friend, listen, there are people... You know, sometimes we get the idea, well, everybody's heard the gospel. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, everybody hasn't heard the gospel. They may have had some religious mumbo jumbo, but they haven't heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They haven't heard about Jesus and what he can do in their life, my friend. We, uh, Wednesday night, I forget what I preached on Wednesday night, but I, I said something that impressed me when I said it. <laughs> and I'm not too easily impressed. But I was using an illustration, my friend. And I said the fact that we are the only hands that Christ has on this earth. Your feet are the only feet that Christ has on this earth. Your eyes, your ears. You, my friend, and God wants to save you, and God wants to use you today to help people that in times like these is looking for something. They're looking for peace. They're looking for contentment. They're looking for relief. And my friend, they're looking in all the wrong places, all the wrong places. And you and I have the answer. You and I have the solution. It's my Lord. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. And we know that today. And in times like these, we need to be sharing it. We need to be passing out tracts. We need to be letting people see our lifestyle, that we're different from the world. We need to do that because the people out there, my friend, are looking for it. They're looking for it. But we just got to give it to them and let them know where we stand. And let them know, my friend, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by him. He's the only way. In times like these, people need a Savior. They need an anchor. And, my friend, and we know where they can find it, don't we? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you this morning. Thank you for that precious song that this lady wrote that stirred so many hearts down through the ages. That's caused so many people to wake up and to realize that in times like these, what we need today is the Lord Jesus Christ. We need him in our homes. We, we, we need him in our lives. We need him in every out 